All right, I think we might be back. I think we might be back. I don't know what happened. It just froze up on our end, and I'm going to give it some time for people to come back in. I got six people in already. Let's see. Everyone got sound and video. Sean McIntosh, yes, I'm here. I don't know what happened. The feed, everything was good on this end, but Facebook said waiting for live feed, so it kicked us out. So I'm going to give it a minute to make sure everyone uh, catches back in. I got it recording. Now I got people. How's the sound? Everyone can hear? Hey, DB Dave. Got Jeff. Yeah, I'm live. <laughs> I'm going to be live. I am live. Aaron. Hello, Skip. Demetrius. Cool. Good, good, good. Okay, so where was I? We were here. So, what I was saying um, is I had no idea what I was going to paint tonight. So I have this panel here prepped. It's just um, Createx Autoborn Sealer Gray. I mixed with a little blue sealer, so therefore it's just got a little color. Uh, I mixed up Candy 2O Marine Blue and the same Marine Blue, and I added like 5% black to it. And these both have 40-50 in it slightly reduced and i'm just gonna wing it um we'll freehand some skulls well maybe if someone said alien maybe we'll do an alien thanks man i'm glad the sound sounds good thank you um i was actually looking at some new mics for upcoming get a little bit better sound clearer sound eventually so we got blue mixed up here let me get my little uh collins airbrush widget Oh, yeah, and Skip, if you're on. Yeah, after like two or three uses, these things click in really nice. Mr. DeGrario, what's going on, buddy? So I mixed up this nice marine blue. And I'm just going to wing it, man. Just no plan. Uh, this is kind of like what I do. And actually, this would be the right timing. This would be normally... Right around now, we'd be doing the World of Wheels. Um, we're setting up for it and doing our live feeds from the World of Wheels. But as we know with COVID, that shit ain't happening. So um, it didn't happen last year. So we're just going to wing it. And whoever is um, partaking tonight, take a drink. Let's get started. This is a little bullet this evening. All right, skull, skull, skulls. Yeah, that's the easiest thing to do. Like I said, maybe I'll throw in some uh, octopus tentacles and some things like that. But I'm just gonna we'll just sketch just like normal. Everyone sees the you know the crosshairs. Uh, I do miss the car show, you man, too. And plus, you know, most of the live feeds I've done, nothing is, you know, fully freehand from start to finish. So I figured, what the heck, we'll just, we'll just go nothing but net. What could go wrong? So if it comes out really bad, it's, you know, I'll just blame the bourbon. You know, and I'm gonna do like skulls into skulls. Like, so like as this cheekbone comes down, I start noticing oh, that could be cool for another eye of a skull here. We'll go to another nose. In three quarter view. Let's see here. This one will just 
the mouth will just kind of tail down into something else. Same with this one here, the cheekbone will kind of go into the nose of this one. No plan, man, nothing but net. Oh man, no, it's the, the two with the airbrush, man. I've been doing this since the old airbrush t-shirt days in the malls. Okay, so I got a skull here, skull here. You know, these projects are fun. I mean, I'll fill up this whole board. Let's see here, we'll do one. We'll do one straight at you here. Now let's switch to the overhead view. You guys can see it a little clearer. Now I'm going to actually reduce it here more. Danny, how's things down the shop? Slow and steady. Yeah, steady is good. I gotta get down and see you guys sometime. It's been a while. It's been too long. Usually we get to catch up a little bit at the World of Wheels every year, but like you said earlier, that's not that's not the case. Alright, let's see here. Ah, no textures yet. Yeah, we can blow a little. Just see how many we can throw at this. What would be the best way to do lettering? So lettering depends what you mean by lettering. So hello, brother Todd. So lettering typically there's a few different ways to do it. So if we were talking like airbrush style, you know, script lettering. I'll just turn this panel over for a second. You know, I come from a t-shirt background. So back in the day with me, it was basically. board here. For us lettering was usually script so if we were doing doing script it was you know that thick to thin rat tail stroke you know or we do like bubble letters um, let's see here so Derek you asked that so if I was doing your name like a bubble letter, you know, this is freehand like t-shirt style. I'm probably going to run out of space, but we'll try to fit it. Yeah, I'm not going to get the CK, so you're getting part of it. So we do, you know, lettering styles like this. Now, if you're talking like like tight letters, you know, lettering I would do like with either like a brush, like your know, pinstripe style, or I'd plot it out. But for lettering back in the day, or even now, t-shirt styles, probably one of the best ways to practice because it's really a series of rat tail or dagger strokes to create like a cool lettering with like a drop shadow effect and you could do like a chrome style like fade airbrush lettering like beach lettering is kind of like riding a bike 
you know, once you do it, you don't really lose it. I mean, I'm not as tight as I used to be, that's for sure, but, you know, all in all, you know, basic lettering, you know. Uh, and best way to practice it, like what I did, was just either cheap cloth or just material like this, just paper towels. You know, practice your strokes, your rat tail strokes, and your thick and thin. I did some, I did a video on Createx's page on like basic practice strokes. And what I'm doing there is that thick to thin. That's like just trigger motion, like doing the trigger here and here, and changing my distance. So that's why I'm going this thick to thin. What I'm doing this here, when I'm coming on the downstroke, I'm opening, I'm pulling back on the trigger. And when I'm coming in the upstroke, I'm closing it and open it back up. So I'm not closing all the way, or I'm trying not to. You know, that's a great one to practice. You practice it other ways. You know, this is stuff you know, we go over in our classes and workshops and things like that. Uh, I know Angie is teaching like the beginner boot camp and then it's going over to um, Gary is doing uh, Airbrush Master, T-Shirt Master, I forget the name of his program. Um, and they'll go over all that lettering and basic technique and, you know, all that fun stuff. But that's just trigger control. Is there specific lettering you're wondering about, like style? What do I call what? I don't know. What are you referring to, Nick? So I got one there. Let's do another one. I have the eyebrows going here. This will be up. We need another one. So we need like a sideways skull here. And this will be the eye for it. And that'll be the temple. And that'll come down to this one. Hair. Hair is tough, man. There's a lot of different techniques. It depends if you do like canvas illustration. Uh, Drew Blair has a beautiful set of uh, videos on how to do hair, like, like um, you know, photorealistic hair, uh, all different colors. I think it's one of his classrooms in a box, too, and it's all done with Createx colors, um, where it goes through like, you know, curly hair, straight hair, red hair, dark hair. That's a really good uh, lesson plan. Uh, and then you got videos by lots of other artists that do hair, like t-shirts or wall mirror where it's more airbrush, um, more like stylized realism than like the photorealism. So, you know, hair's really understanding how to draw it is a one big thing. Um, and then the next is just how to layer the technique. So Drew Blair's got a really good video on specifically just hair, like how to render hair. So that's something to consider. So I got a skull here. So we got one, two, three, four. What do we got here? I'm gonna do another one here. But he's gonna be looking down. So let's go the eye sockets. So the nose is wide. Yeah, if you go so if you go to Drew's site, um, which I forget. If you look him up on Facebook, he has it, but I forget the name of his actually business site. Um, but there's a, like I said, there's a beautiful classroom in a box. Like this was, I did this from one of his classroom in a boxes uh, a couple years ago when he first came out of it. So this is for one of the classroom in a box. Um, comes with a, a video lesson and all the paints and stuff like that. So, you know, this is just a quick and simple one. So it's something to think of. <clears throat> 
Got like another skull here. And that one's just gonna tuck behind this this here. Um so alien skull, like maybe I'll do like we'll do a little nose. And then we'll do like big alien like eyes. So like, you know, that type of alien, maybe. He might look stupid, but eh, whatever. We'll just... Anything about about flames? Oh, I know a lot about flames. Uh, do quite a bit of them. So some of my YouTube videos have some flames, some flaming skulls. Uh, I got one on Create Texas as well, and you know, and that's the more fire type. And then like the traditional type would be like tape out flames. You know, and taped out flames is something I right, had a big start with. You know, traditional. Yeah, school of realism. That's it, Mike. Thanks. You know, traditional flames were you know, old school style, which was, oops, you know, taped out flames. This we do a lot of still, love it on motorcycles and hot rods. This is traditional flames, which I will do a video on. I got a lot of video plans, it's just finding the time to do it all. So that's the you know, traditional flame set. Uh, and then fire, I have one on Createx, and I know Craig Frazier just did um, a whole series of them, like did like three different, four different colors, flames and smoke. So yeah, this is like that more traditional, old school flame, and then you have like the realistic fire type. Yeah, but that's that type of flame. Which you know, refer to best way to refer to that as old school flames versus flames or fire so uh, yeah if you're gonna learn fire there's a lot of great videos the best one to teach it ever was mike lavalli who's no longer with us his videos were great his true fire technique which was true fire was his process and his layering and color combos and it was a beautiful uh fire style um and then there's a lot of other ways to do it the big big thing about fire is you know, being staying loose, I recommend people do fire in like simple colors, like you know, a blue fire, green fire to start, so you get used to the movement. Because the realistic colors has more layering, and that takes a lot more practice. And look at photo reference, pick fire apart. You know, I, same thing with skulls and everything like that. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have the trouble with skulls or portraits or fire. Because they want to paint it, but they don't want to study it and kind of look at it. Um, you know, I spent years drawing skulls, but I always have a skull reference nearby or something like that. You know, same thing with fire. You know, you want to, when you're doing fire, you want to have some good fire reference pictures and pick it apart. So I will do some fire some night. Uh, tonight, obviously not because I didn't really prepare anything tonight. Uh, just no time. As Danny knows, this is um, this is peak motorcycle custom car season. Everyone wants their stuff because it's getting warmer out. So everyone, everyone takes their sweet time in November, December, January, into February, and then they, you know, get the stuff in. And then the first time it hits sixty degrees, they're like, "Oh, is my stuff done yet?" So we're all kind of crunching right now to get stuff done. Um, so yeah. I didn't like that alien skull, so I just took him out. I'll do something. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to fill this panel up. Fill it up.
But I know I got uh, I had an older video of me doing, you know, a traditional fire with um, my pack of skulls on like a maroon fender of a uh, front fender of a motorcycle. Just gonna spit at this. How's that picture? Is that picture a little blurry? Let's see if I can clean that up. I want to give you guys the best picture I can give you. Should be pretty clear. So, like, this is the fun part. This is like sketching. So, like, see, I had that blowout. I don't care about that blowout. That blowout, I'm going to work that in. You know, you won't see it when it's done. This is just. Working out some details. And then a lot of these shapes, I'm going to just chisel out with Gerald's texture effect. So it kind of gets more organic. And uh, just kind of let things happen. I haven't done a panel like this where I just, I think the last one was the, the World of Wheels a couple years ago, or SEMA, where I just, I think, I remember SEMA, I was doing like an hour demo, and I think I was able to pull off, you know, 50 skulls or something like that in about an hour, you know, just morphing, skulls morphing into skulls, and just, they're fun to do, these projects. I got this over reduced a little too much, but it's all right. This is just a sketch layer. I'll go to the darker one in a sec. Just kind of want to pick out where. So what I'm doing these, all I'm doing, I just kind of map the eye sockets out first. The eyes and nose of each major one. Now let's turn it upside down. We'll do these other ones upside down and see what we get. So we'll do another one here. You know what? Actually, I love one of the reasons I love doing these. It was um, Robert Williams, who did like the Rob Roscoff skateboards, the Santa Cruz skate decks back in the day. I had a few of those growing up, and I, there was a lot where they just. How's it going, Stephen? Um, where they just, you know, it was just all this stuff morphing into other stuff. And I think it was Robert Williams was the designer behind some of those Rob Roscott boards. And I always loved that, you know, something melting into something else and just, you know, just really endless. So let's see here. Now this almost looks like... Almost looks like the jaw here. Da, 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 da. It could almost be a nose. You know, that's going to be a nose of a large skull. And that eye will be over here. See it? So, this will be here. Skull sketching, man. Just it's like a big puzzle. You just kind of figure out what goes where. You don't really know until it's done. Oh yeah, yeah, Stephen. I'm pretty sure Robert Williams, not Robin Williams, Robert Williams was the artist behind some of the, if not all, of the um, Rob Ross Cop Santa Cruz boards. I may be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that's that's the case. So feel free to correct me or look it up if I am wrong. Mm. 
here. This one needs a big, this one needs an eyeball in it. That's pretty cool, man. I actually sent I sent pictures of it to a friend of mine who who runs a um, a, a, a recreational marijuana store up here for him to look at. Just for shits and giggles. there I'll use my pocket graphics see now you can see that now when you flip it over it might look a little weird but not really just it's, it'll be an upside down skull so that's a big one here cheap bone going down I said, I had no plan tonight, so I'm just, just winging it. Um, that eyebrow will create the eyebrow for this skull. Here's his nose. You know, this project might look complete like crap when it's done. Who knows? And if it does, oh well. It's Friday night. Nearly finished with a big, a big project, big bagger project. I do not like the way that nose works out. So we ain't gonna fix it. Danny's familiar with these bikes. I did, uh, I think, two bikes for you guys like this, where it was just skulls and skulls and skulls and skulls. Uh, one of them was that red one we did a while back, and it's just, I think those are over 150 skulls on that candy red, ultra stretched out bagger you guys did. So what's cool is this, this kind, this forehead, that temple area with the skull underneath it almost becomes the jawline or the cheekbone for this one here. And now roll down like this. I'll squeeze like one or two more. We'll squeeze a little guy into here hiding. So I'd like to thank you guys, you know, almost 40 of you guys on a Friday night for hanging out. Skulls, skulls, skulls. Next week I promise I'll have something a little bit more original planned. After last week's I kind of wasn't ready to top that uh, two-hour painting of Jack Nicholson and The Shining. <laughs> oh yeah, Danny, thank you. I wish I could show the one the pics of it that I have right now. Um, it looks really. It's now that everything's done. The oranges and stuff. It's it's looking good. Thank you. It's a great bike. That one's that one's done through with uh, Audio Works. So it's gonna be just a killer bike all around. Not a, not a crazy super stretch either. It's a fat front, fat front tire. You know, not super stretched out. Oh, 
TV there. Yeah, we're gonna hide just a little one up here. And there's another eye. So how many skulls we got mapped in here? We got one here, one here. So one, two, three, four to side view. Five, six, seven, eight, upside down, nine, ten, eleven so far. There's eleven on here. Now this one, I'm going to actually erase out. I can still do that. So what's nice about and I've done I do this with reducer sometimes too with solvent. And this is just a little isopropyl. That eye socket would be going just a little different. So where's everyone coming in from tonight? Someone said they were from Rochester, New York a little bit ago. Ah, from Rochester. I haven't been up that way in a while. I think earlier there was someone that said they're from the UK. Very cool. Alright, let's switch up. Let's switch up just to an eclipse here. I uh, saw so like 21 draw on your page. Yeah, the 21 Draw, I, I have all their stuff. Their their videos are great. Their books are awesome. Like, I would definitely recommend getting the 21 Draw books series uh, for Illustrator Guidebook and things like that. They're, they're awesome. Um, and there's some great videos on their stuff, too. Northwest Connecticut, you're not too far. Ontario. You know, I haven't heard of... Maine. Maine, you're not that far. Abilene, Texas? Uh-huh, Abilene, Texas. Arizona, England. England. I have not been overseas ever, man. That's one thing that's got to happen. That's got to happen sometime, especially after this COVID thing is done. Yes, please. Sean, you're in London? Why? Well, I thought you were in the States. I forgot you were there. All right. I have a few friends that live overseas that I met online. Cool. Let's see here. Going from Florida. I'll be down in Florida in a few weeks. We down doing the Ever Shark Circus. Sean also said Ontario. Is there a town called London in Ontario? Must be. Well, he was just joking. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I've never spent really any time up in Ontario. Yeah, obviously, Montreal, it's, on, it's kind of close in our neck of the woods, uh, in that area. Nova Scotia quite a bit, which is where a lot of my family is from. Orlando, Florida. Be down there oh, soon. Your boss. Yep, so, oh, cool, you'll be at the circus, you coming? Awesome. It's going to be a good time. So 
So yeah, all I'm doing now is, you know, this isn't really much of a how-to lesson or anything like most of mine are. Okay. This is just messing around. So yeah, the um, so my program, you know, if you look at some of the past ones, we cover a whole host of things from um, you know, basic stuff like basic lettering, like we do the Airbrush Art Circus logo and talk about how to layer candies and do lettering vector. Then we go into light and shading. You usually do like a, one of the chain how tos or something like that. And I had them around somewhere, and then we go into some larger projects. Um, We've done the, the Lumalore Dragon in it. We've done the skull and pattern work, tape out work. We do five to six projects, and they all encompass different aspects of custom paint that start from the basic uh, texturing and layouts to intermediate to advanced techniques. And we'll throw in a little fire. Uh, stencil use freehand. We go kind of through everything in my, in my program. And so, like, you know, we've done the Black Widow project quite a few times in the past, so I'm abandoning that this year. Uh, what I think we're going to do is my new Rose Vector set. I think we're going to accompany that into a project. Can you ask anything with classes in the Northeast? No, not really. Um, other than, you know, I'll do private sessions once this is all over. Uh, or we do small group. But I'm going to be doing a lot of online videos. The problem in the Northeast, it's too damn expensive to run a big program up here. We've done them in the past, and um, hotel and flight are cost prohibitive to hold events up here that are reasonable to clients. So, you know, down in Florida or just vacation destination places like Florida, Vegas, uh, California, Texas, we can do, we can rent a hotel in a lobby, you know, one of the conference rooms in, at a reasonable price and have airport access. But here in the Northeast, you know, Boston, New York, Connecticut, the damn hotel rates are, you know, especially here in Boston, they have three, four dollars a night. Um, yeah, the Rose Vector, we're definitely going to, I'm definitely incorporating the Rose Vector, uh, Richard, into the program this time. I might do a Rose and a Skull or a Rose and a Cross type of thing, or maybe Guns and Roses. Um, and I think I'm going to do that on a ground metal panel that has the grinding and candy already done from TNT panels, and we'll do some fire in that. I, that's one of the projects I'm leaning towards uh, as opposed to doing the, the spider. We've done the Black Widow like six times. We're going to take a break from that and add other stuff. I'm um, pretty sure we're going to do the dragon how-to, which might be the dragon with the chains and the castle that I've been wanting to do for a while. I know Shane's been wanting that, so we might do that down there. Uh, and I have a whole host of other things. I still have that Scarecrow from last year I haven't done yet that I sketched up. So Scarecrow might be might be one of the projects I do as well. So, we shall see. But it'll be something different. You know, won't be the same as last time. Because I like having a lot of students come back and take the class, so I want it to be something new every time. I, I hate repeating the same project over and over. It's going to be easy for me after all these years of teaching, like me and Rhino have done when we do the we do the rendezvous, we do the rendezvous me and Rhino have done like three lessons, three new full projects every every time. So we've done 30 original program, we've never uh, never repeated. Um, and the circus for me is the same way. Even though I've repeated certain aspects of lessons, um, it's always been something slightly different. Yeah, we, we're probably going to come back to Arizona. We may. Um, we've done there a couple times. It's a really good spot. Um, so I don't think we're coming back there in the fall, but that hasn't really been decided yet. So we'll see what happens. You know, the biggest thing is we want to keep the events reasonable for you guys. Um, but if a hotel is charging two or $300 a night, on top of the class fees and airfare hotel, we're not going to get much turnout. And... For those of you who don't realize, you know, the programs are extremely expensive to put on with renting the halls and, and the insurance and liability and doing things the right way. And even with the sponsors, it, it costs a lot to just the base set it up. So 
we do in areas where you can get really good pricing. So like I said, Vegas has always been great. You can get flights into Vegas cheap. Airports are close to their usually venues. Florida is another one. Texas is why we did um, why we did San Antonio. Uh, we wanted to do Austin, but the difference in hotels from Austin to San Antonio is like three to four times uh, the hotel rate. Uh, and a lot of it is the, the hall itself for the week. So say San Antonio is like five grand for the week to rent it. Austin's going to be like 20000 to rent that same size hall. So there's no way you could have an event for like $600, $700 a person and be able to pay for it all. So that's why a lot of these events don't happen up here in the Northeast or expensive cities just because, you know, New York, you can never do it. It's $500 a night in New York. Boston is like average $300 a night. Um, and that's not for a nice hotel. That's for like the days in, you know, Holiday Inn Express, like in a not so nice area of town. Uh, during the week is going to cost you two, three hundred dollars a night. Rob Scott Rob would like to do a um, would like to do another Texas event because yeah, he's in Texas. It'd be great for him. It's just a matter of you know cost effectiveness. Yeah, Dallas Fort Worth would be cool. I just don't know. I, I'm not familiar with like the cost structure of that. I know like why we don't do them up here anymore. And we did them back in the day. Airbrush, you know, Airbrush Action used to do them in Atlantic City um, back in the day. And then he did one or two in Connecticut. He tried to do a couple in New York, and they were just you know cost prohibitive. So I think he did them, but I don't think they were you know a money maker. And you know, newsflash, guys. It's not charity, <laughs> so we do have to at least, you know, break even to make these events happen. You know, the sponsors come in, the sponsors help, but if we don't get enough bodies and seats, the events get hard to pay for. You know, and Rob runs a really good program. He's he's done it very well. Um, and does it right. You know, I've been to other programs, see other programs out there that, you know, just, they don't do it right. Um, maybe because they just don't know, they haven't done them. a lot of them, they're just getting there. You know, you need to have good lighting. You need to have a good environment to paint in. Um, you know, ease of access, things like that. That way, you know, you can teach well without fighting elements or fighting other things, you know, that just make it prohibitive to like to learn. We try to make the environment as close to as possible to like a studio where you'd have everything you need. You're not fighting a bunch of other stuff. Just learning airbrush and custom paint is enough to learn without throwing in a bunch of other problems. Can you ask what happened to airbrush action? Airbrush action, um, they just went under, really. Just like most magazines, it wasn't you know, some of it was just, um, it just been around for a while, and you know, Net kind of killed it, and Cliff had sold it, and it was already kind of on, you know, the way down, just because as magazines are tough to, to keep profitable, and, and just kind of let it go. And then, at that point, it was just kind of too hard. I think if it had held out longer, it would have been fine, because I think people are getting bored with everything just being online. Um, and Airbrush Action was a great source of information and, you know, standards and things like that. He, you know, there's no secret that, you know, me and Cliff and some other artists had falling out at certain points and just, you know, artist, creative, business, you know, differences. But he still ran a great uh, resource and did it right. So... Yeah, will it come back someday? Who knows? I'd like to see it back or some 
form fit. There's all, I mean, there's some other great ones now. So there's um, Airbrush the Magazine, which is by Don Johnson. That's He's done really, really good. Um, running that. And there's lots of great articles, lots of great artists in there. Um, you know, and it deserves more traction. And hopefully it's getting it. I don't know. But, you know, the magazines and the programs and artists like us, you know, we need support, you know. You know, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. And there is a cost to doing business. Like the first time, I remember we did events back in the day. It was We did some up here in the Northeast. Uh, that was uh, ABU, Airbrush University. That was done through Bear Air, and that was me and Steve Leahy and Mike Learn and Vince Goodeve and uh, Keith Hansen, a whole bunch of uh, artists, Nubby, uh, Rod Fuchs. Uh, who else came and taught? Um, it was a great program. We did up here in the Northeast. We actually rented Stonehill College and did it on a college campus during the summer, and that was a blast because you had a whole run of a college campus for the weekend or for like the four days we were doing it. I'm going to try for the heck of it some racing and just see how this looks. As opposed to doing some white, let's uh, do a little erasing. What time is it, Kaylee? Uh, nine. Nine. Oh. So by adding the 4050, the, the racing is going to be a little harder, but it's actually pretty good because I can just pick away and do some like light highlights. I just want to see how it would work. There's some cracks in the skull. See what these teeth are going to be. Not teeth, it's just going to kind of morph. You know, these are the new, this is the new um, Medea eraser. So realistically, you want to erase like earlier on when the paint's not going to stick. When you start layering, it starts getting a little bit harder, especially because I have added the 4050 and I'm on a hard surface. If I was on like... Um, illustration board or paper it would erase a little easier we're gonna mix up let me get some illustration white here <clears throat> we'll run some highlights and stuff i hear my daughter yawning in the background We'll see how long I'm going to run this one. I'd like to try to finish this, but we'll see what happens. I know it is Friday night and people have better things to do than to watch my stupid ass paint. But since I missed last night, I want to get in tonight. What's the bid? There's been no bid on this yet, man. No bid at all. Someone else does a razor work well on canvas. Ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you, if it's a raw canvas or that's got a heavy, you know, um, nap still, it will work, but it's not going to be like super great. Uh, if you gessoed your canvas pretty well then yeah, it's gonna work really, really, really good. So now we're gonna take that, this illustration opaque white, and we'll soften some stuff down.
I'm liking that now. I'm gonna get these eyes out here a little bit. Get some texture in here. You know, so you just like start pulling that depth out just by pushing and pulling detail. Well, I appreciate that. I can think of better ways to spend a Friday evening, but I do enjoy doing. I enjoy doing the feeds. Like I said, I couldn't do it last night because of the project I was on. I just ran over and I was exhausted. Moving around this panel. He needs an eyeball, too. Gary is starting to get a bit at 150. Thank you, Gary. That means I have to finish the painting now. You got the other painting safe and sound, correct? Oh yeah, you did. The rose the rose came in good, right? In the Shining Painting, Dave, and the Skull from two weeks ago, those got to be cleared this week when I'm clearing on the bike, and then I'll get those out. So I'll, I usually clear like three, four panels at a time and buff them. So I'll wait for when I'm clearing some bike parts and do them at the same time. So they'll all be out with the next week and a half or so. So I didn't forget about you guys. We got some heavy winds going on outside tonight. Sweet. I always get nervous when I'm shipping panels. Especially ever since I, uh, I don't think Kelly, I don't think Kelly Ross is on here tonight. But when I was up in Michigan. I was in upstate Michigan doing that um, big RV with a water design years back and uh, two years ago. And that one, I had a test panel, I had a big test panel for it. And I had the customer ship it up so I could verify the colors and everything. Because the customer was in like Baltimore and the RV was up in Michigan, you know, from Boston. So we never actually met. And then he sent me that. Um, he sent me the panel, and the panel came in all twisted and waved, man. It was it was horrible. So whenever I see that, I get nervous now that, you know, I'm going to send one of these paintings. I know it's going to happen eventually. So I'm going to send one out. 
and it's just going to get demolished on the way. We had that happen to a bike a few years ago. Coming back from SEMA, one of the bikes got just trashed. The, the shippers flipped the crate over and destroyed the bike. And uh, it's been the better part of two months fixing it afterwards. That was the um, the Hellbound ZX10 from a few years back. For those of you who remember that one. So for those joining late, I am I came in as with zero plan tonight because I've been crazy doing bikes and getting things ready for spring up here. So I just went completely freehand and just started uh, messing around. Mr. Wayne. Yes, Wayne, we did make it better. It did come out a lot better when it was done. You know, second time you always get to add more shit. So, uh, like I said, those just, just joining, I just started throwing lines down. And I haven't, uh, didn't pre-sketch anything, didn't pre-work anything. I haven't used any stencil but a texture stencil. No skulls. No skull textures, just messing around. You want to include the one in my head. <laughs> Yep, that's the white. Wrong brush. Yeah, we've seen the show before. Oh, this, yeah. We ain't seen this quite a few times. I, I haven't painted one of these things in a long time. It's great to just start messing around with one quick. I should have actually used the opaque uh, colors on this. It would have went faster. Then toning with candy, but I kind of wanted to mess with the candies tonight. They hadn't in a week. And I have all my, my opaque colors out in the shop. I didn't bring them in. Up to the studio here. Yeah, it's too late to change colors now. So you can do. I'm just gonna keep working. Trying to make the class in Chicago. Uh, I don't have anything in. Oh, you're trying to make a class in Chicago. Yeah. Um... Four highlights here, shadow of that eyebrow. You see how once you start highlighting, things just start to come alive a little bit. We'll get this eye. Yeah, he needs a pupil. All right, a little pupil. A very small one. Small pupil, big glint. That'll make him look uh, a little crazy. No plan, man. Just, just sketching, just messing around. See what I can pull off in a short time on this larger panel. Yeah, the white definitely picks up way more in the camera than it is in person, but.
So see how they're just all kind of rolling. You know, I'm gonna roll this one right into this one. Let them just connect. See, I just kind of made that one connect to this one. Yeah, it's hard to believe that the circus is coming up so quick. The circus coming up on the 20. Kelly, bring that graphic up. I think it's 28. Yeah. The art circus one. The one. Yeah. There, it is. there we go. Yeah, so um, April 28th to the 2nd. That is. The next Amherst Art Circus, that is down in Orlando, Florida. That's coming up quick. And plan, it's still looking good to happen. So, you know, Florida's really wide open, so we're not going to have any issues there. So i got some great plans for that class. So we talked about earlier, definitely going to do the Rose Vector Set in there. Uh, we're going to go over a lot of composition design, how to use uh, Adobe Illustrator in the plotter and things like that which will be huge. Um, I want to definitely go over using Adobe Illustrator with the iPad, and how to integrate that into your workflow. A whole lot of plans for the circus this time. I said Florida is cheap to fly into and the venue is really nice. Okay, you can take that off the screen now. Thank you. Oh, May 3rd is your birthday. So, oh, so you gotta go to, are you going to go to Disney after? You got it all. You got... Um, Spots reserved because I think you have to reserve your spots for your birthday. I mean, not for your birthday, but for Disney. You can't just walk in the day of. I think. I don't know. I'd love to head over to Disney. Yeah. I might be heading over to Tampa for a few days afterwards for a job. So we shall see what happens there. Hey, Mom, I just told my mom is on. Yeah, this is almost just that like t-shirt style quick painting method where is my pocket graphics I'm throwing stuff all over the place here oh you locked it for two weeks nice nice man you gonna go over to Universal at all? I want to go over to Universal. One of the one of our friends, he's been at the circus stuff. Uh, um, uh, I just I just blanked on Labelle's first name. Um, he runs all of the big carts over there.
Yeah, and if you can't make it over to the circus for April, and for the end of April into May, then we got the rendezvous coming up in Anaheim. And that is also going to be part of Mike Lavalley's memorial service. For those who knew Mike or liked his work, there is um, going to be a event for Mike Lavalley's memory uh, with Chip Foose and some others that are organizing it. And if you want to come down to that and be a part of it, uh, I don't, you don't have to be in the um, rendezvous for that, but you got to get a hold of Dave and register because it's a very limited amount. But, you know, the circus is a five-day program, full five days. Oh, Dave, you got, hey, Dave, Dave is here. So we got any questions on that, it's here. And um, I didn't know the specifics, so definitely check with Dave on that. But the circus is a five-day program. That's five days indoor. We got a nice hotel. Uh, we're going to have the inflatable spray boost there so we can clear stuff, prep stuff, and the whole slew of classes. And great sponsors on board for that. And that's a full five day program. And then the rendezvous is going to be a three day program. Dave, are we doing the beginner intro day? Uh, so, the, the, like the day before, like the main program starts? Or is it just going to be the circus date? I mean, the rendezvous main classes. So, you can essentially do a four day program. And the nice thing about these programs, you just bring yourself. You don't need to bring anything else. You don't need to bring your own airbrushes. You don't need to bring compressors. You don't need to bring anything. You just come. We have everything set and ready for you. You're not fighting any elements. Good weather, we're gonna be. Good conditions. Good instructors, good sponsors, good people. So definitely come on down to that. Flip that script and do the other side. They're okay, starting to come together nice. Yeah, if you go on uh, airbrushartcircus.com, then um, you get all these based on the different classes. I know Angie is teaching the beginners. That's a that's a two day like beginner program. And then what you can do if you're that one, the way my class is situated because I do multiple projects, is um, you can finish the beginner if you've never picked up an airbrush before. You're just not comfortable in a class environment yet. You take Angie's for two days, and then you can come into my class on days three, four, and five. Because the way I have my projects set up is on the third day, I'm always starting a new project. So third, fourth, and fifth projects, or third and fourth project, depending on the complexity of the fourth. You'll jump into one of those, and you already have kind of your skill sets done, and you can jump right in. And a few of the other programs are doing the same thing. So you can essentially go in and do a core beginner's class. Um, and then walk into one of the other programs like mine. Um, and I'm not sure who else is doing it, but Rob would have all the information on that. And you can bounce around there to there. The cool thing about how we have it set up, and we always set it up, you know, you know since the average yeah, action days, you know, it's a large open venue. We have the classes set up around. So you can wander, you know, if you're getting a little frustrated or you wanted to see what's going on in another class, you just walk over and sit on in and start picking up what that instructor is laying down. And maybe see what you want to do next time. Or, you know, depending on the class, if it's full or not, you can you know, jump in to another class midway through if you need to or want to. You know, you're not locked in.
you know, and that's the way we've set up these programs for, you know, I mean, I've been teaching programs now for getting close to two decades now. You know, from beginner to intermediate to advanced stuff. So, a good handle on things. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate that. You know, and like I talked about it in my ad, if you saw it, is look, we, you know, I love doing these videos. I love doing the YouTube stuff. We all love watching them, but nothing beats a live class. You know, you learn so much and the instructors and students feed off each other. And just, you know, everyone's got their own unique questions or unique concerns. And it's gonna, you know, uh, hey, Shana, um, you know, that's going to help the class build because if you have eight or 10, 15 people in a class, one person is going to have this issue or this question for how they need to work their stuff. Another person can have these questions. There's, and we work through all that. And sometimes that's, that's, you know, that's what we don't get online as much because, you know, even though we're having back and forth conversations here, you know, it's not the same as like an in-person live event. So Like I said, I've been fortunate to be doing these for almost 20 years. And I started with doing, um, you know, like one day Saturday afternoon classes every month at Bear Air down in Massachusetts where I kind of started teaching my first early programs. Uh, and then we did Airbrush University, which was, we did, I think we did four or five of those. And then I was invited to do the Airbrush Action Getaways and did a whole bunch of them. And every program, you know, has their own unique thing about it. And uh, then after that, we did the... the what we got? Again. What's oh, that? back now. They oh. for a we almost lost it. This is the thing about Friday nights. That's why a lot of people don't do live feeds this long on Friday nights, because the traffic is heavy and we could get kicked any time. Um, so we still have a bid on this from Gary at 150 If anyone is... In for upping that. Feel free, because we might get cut off. Is it still frozen, or is it back? Let me know. Okay, does it look like it's streaming fine? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Steven said it was frozen, but... Yeah, that must have went when it when it bogged. Okay, should be back. Yeah. said after I was doing the getaways, and I was doing the, uh, then we came up with the rendezvous, and then we came up with the circus. He said they all have their um, different approaches and different classes. Like when I do the rendezvous, it's me and Rhino's uh, automotive graphics and plotter class. So that is mainly geared towards automotive graphics, layouts, tape outs, oh, along with. Bid. Oh. Sean, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We're at 200. Um, you know, that's more automotive related. So we go through base coats, candies, metallics, pearls, graphics, uh, integrating artwork into graphics, plotting. Um, and then, Brian, it's already at 200 at this point, but thank you. The um, And then we get into, you know, how to do all those different things. So more automotive related. Um, and then am I, am I Ron, am I, in my circus class, I don't do as much automotive. We still do some automotive tape out, but it's less geared in the automotive. It's more illustration, um, plotting, vector technique, design theory, business theory. We go through all that stuff. So thank you, Sean, for that, that 200 bid. Appreciate it.
Yeah, the Friday night traffic gets a little hectic on speeds. This one here. So with that being said, we're gonna have to try to wrap this up before it gets too long. Because usually when you start going long, that's when they start they start clipping you out. Down below is some of the lovely products and stuff we use here. I've got my Iwata airbrushes. This is Createx. It's got FBS tape and did a laid. Man, I think I laid about a half a mile of tape this week on this bagger between masking and the mask material, the plotting film. And then that is all available through Dave at Coast Airbrush. Thank you, Kimberly. Nine third. Not bad. We're an hour and a half. You know, and I say sponsors, but you know, they're not paying for this feed. I'm not getting paid to do this by these guys. Um, these are products that I've worked with for years that have been great in the industry, great for the industry. They service the industry very well, and so I'm just paying it forward. Yeah, you know, I'm not getting a paycheck to do these live feeds. This is on my dime. <laughs> Skull duggery, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Craig Frazier had a really cool stencil set called Skull duggery at some point. But I wanted, to, man, you know, I mean, I got my you know pack of skulls set. You know, we could have thrown a bunch of these on, but I just wanted to just completely freestyle. Thanks, Stephen. Josh is at 225. Thank you, sir. All these panels do get cleared afterwards. Um, cleared and either if I do gloss, I'll give them a nice polish. Uh, if I if I do flat clear, like satin or flat, I always clear it once with hard clear or you sand that flat, and then I do a flat clear on it. I think it looks better that way. So it's a quality piece when you get it. Appreciate that, Josh. From Sweden, thank you for checking in from Sweden. That is a place I would love to visit sometime. I'd love to come teach out there and do a class. Someday, someday. Kayla, you could go to Sweden, right? Yes. Yeah. See, my daughter will even come. She can assist. I I appreciate you guys for watching. I love sharing it. I love doing this. You know, that's really why I do. I enjoy, um, hey, I just enjoy painting. Um, and with COVID, you know, we don't get a chance to paint for people or front of people much anymore. And when I started, I was a teacher artist, so I started in the malls after, you know, after high school and stuff. Um, I was in the mall paint teacher. I was used to painting around people. And then, you know, I would do, I would do the malls and then I would do the, the shows and I would paint live. And... Boss? Yes, there's another Voss. We have two Vosses. You guys aren't related, right? I don't think so, but...
Yes, yeah, Swede does sound good, Steve. Please, pleased to meet you. I so hope they're not related. Invasion of the Vosses. Listen, someday I definitely hope to get over to Sweden. Just overseas in general. I'd love to teach over overseas. We've we've tried to do our uh, we were gonna do Australia. Uh, we were in talks to do it, and then it's kind of just was, things got crazy and trying to logistically make it happen. Didn't. There's, three. Oh, there's, three bosses. there's three bosses here. Holy sh! <laughs> sh Holy sh! Bosses. All unrelated. They're gonna get the trio though. I don't even know if Boston is on the last name. There's a couple of McKays that'll get on. Oh, uh, wow. What's his first name? I forget his first name. Um, he's from um, not Australia, New Zealand. Uh, there are a lot of McKays in Scotland. Yes, there's quite a few. And in Nova Scotia. There's some up there. There's some, yeah. <laughs> doctor, 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 doctor. Paul yes, Paul, thank you. I haven't seen Paul in a while. Someone's round him up. Tell him to get his butt over here. He's probably sleeping. What time is it in New, New Zealand right now? <laughs> 9 a.m. I think? Ah, he's up. Alexa, what time is it in New Zealand? I could have just done this. In Auckland, it is 2.35 p.m. 2.35 p.m. Yep. Paul should get over here. 16 hours again? Aged? So he's, yeah, no, he's probably not. He's, he's working. Or he's ignoring me. That's not my usual night either. We're getting there. A little empty over here. So what was our last bid? 225? Yes. I lost when it comes to Voss, except Scott. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's it's he does have a small K, but I don't think it's. I think it's still a Scottish name. Could be wrong. How are you doing tonight, Mr. Green? Yes. Yes. Now, uh, once you add the reducer into the 4050, or even the colors for that matter, that reducer is kicking over the resins to make it dry because it changes the pH. So the pH will then, uh, the pH will cure and it'll, it'll, the pH drops and that's what dries it and evacuates everything. So, yeah, once you put it in there, you probably have the day to use it. Some colors you get longer, some are shorter. So, once you activate the 4050, you need to use it. Yeah, so think of it, think of the 4050 like any type of clear coat or anything. The, the 4050 is fine, but once you put that reducer in it, you're activating it. My pleasure doing the feeds. And actually, for those, if you didn't notice, didn't, didn't see the post yesterday, uh, a year ago, when we first went through COVID, I did the dragon feed. You know, I did the dragon step-by-step, paint-by-numbers, how-to thing. 
So that feed from last year, I edited that down into a how-to. So you can watch that feedback and follow along if you want to do that dragon step by step. That is up on my YouTube channel. What kind of airbrush slash airbrushes are you using? So right now, this is just uh, I want to Eclipse CS. This is my workhorse. I use these, you know, day in, day out for just about everything. Um, standard Awad Eclipse. And man, I think this, these, some of these are like 15, 20 years old. Um, I have a Micron here. I'm using it to use it. I don't need it for this, for the detail. They're actually a little bit more finicky to use, the more detail. This is kind of the misnomer people are doing right now. They're like, oh, I'm going to buy this brush because it's a 0.18 or it's 0.12 or 0.20. It does awesome detail. Yes, I can do awesome detail, but the paint has to be very thin and dialed in to achieve it and not fight. Thank you, Gene, for 250. Kayla, can you write that down, please? Um, so, you know, your best bet, your every, <coughs> everyday workhorses, uh, the Iwata Eclipse CS is my favorite. Uh, that's a 0.35. If you are the bottom feed, you can get a 0.5. And then you have my second go to that I use. I don't have any up here. I don't think I have any up here. All right. So the HPC Plus is another one. So these go to a more uh, smaller head. Uh, point, uh, I think a point three oh, so three five. And this has the, the screw-in nozzle, so they're a lot more accurate, finer detail. These are my go-tos. These I use day in, day out. I don't use the Microns as much, or I use them because I have them, not because you need to. Uh, I, I'd rather see people buy three or four Eclipses. Um or a CH or a plus or, you know, something like that, uh, than a Micron right out the gate. You don't need them right out the gate. They are fun. They are awesome. But, you know, if anyone tells you you need a Micron to do detail, they don't know how to paint very well. Micron makes an experienced painter be able to do certain things easier, but they actually become more cumbersome for a beginner painter because they're very finicky brushes. And it's not just the Iwata Microns, any airbrush in the 0 0.18, 0 0.20 nozzle range is gonna be more finicky just because you're running paint through a smaller hole. So there's always gonna be different challenges with that. But you don't need it to do detail. My father used to always say, do you need it or do you want it? Whenever I wanted something, like, oh, I, I need that. He's like, do you need it or do you want it? And I know I say that to Kaylee, she rolls her eyes at me. Uh, you know, do you need a micron in detail? No. Do you want a micron in detail? Shit, yeah. You don't need it. People have issues with eyes who are not, not comfortable with this painting. With this one? Oh, yeah. That and, um, what's the phobia of, like, holes? Oh, I don't Is know. Phobia? Holophobia? So for those not paying attention, the current bid is at two fifty. I got a good price on SB. Look, like I said, I love my SB. I love my Microns, and they're amazing brushes that I use the crap out of them. Um, I just don't recommend people getting them for the reason of I can't do detail unless I have a Micron. So that is not the case. The Micron will do certain details easier. It'll be more finicky in other ways. But they'll achieve things that the Eclipses won't. Just don't fall for the, in order to paint detail, you need to have a Micron type, you know, 0.12 Creos, um, you know, Badger, you know, Sata. Everyone makes great quality brushes, um, but none of them you need to go down to the 0 0.1, 0 0.18, 0 0.20 to get detail. Um, a good quality airbrush will do detail without being at that level. But microns will run like, you know, the nicest thing the micron when you get down to it is when you're in that brush level, you are, you can run super, super thin paint, ink-like consistency at very low pressure 
and it atomizes amazingly smooth. It's not grainy and stipply. Whereas if you try to run super thin watery paint through an eclipse or something like that, it's going to come out kind of grainy because it's going to it's going to atomize funky because it's too big of a hole. It's like putting it's like a garden hose running water through it. It's not you're not going to get that fine mist. But when you go to a smaller, you get that finer mist. Yeah, AB turbos are great. They're great to look at and they're great to hear. I hate painting with them. Uh, um, you know, I never found them to be very good detail because of the way it works. Atomization of paint, awesome. Uh, freehand detail, not so much, but they're a cool gun to have. Um, and for when they were made and the technology, they were cool as hell. Um, is it needed? No. If it was, you know, now nah, you don't get tip dry, but when you're running, to, to, to get the paint to run through those, you're running ink-like consistency anyway. So you're not going to get tip dry through a micron either at that that thinness. So... Yeah, I mean, they're awesome. They're Like I said, they're fun. And you, you, there's no denying that the sound they make is just friggin' cool. <laughs> Kelly, what time are we on here? 9.45. 9.45. We're going to start wrapping this thing up. I actually... Didn't think I was going to be able to finish this whole panel. But, you know, it's to that stage where um, I'm at that tail end. I'm picking details, having fun. And right now, that painting is going to Gene Stanton right now. And we'll see where we end up at the end of the show. You know, for anyone bidding within the U.S., I do free shipping. I box it and ship it free. Uh, if you're outside of the U.S., you just got to pay for shipping. I'm not going to charge you for, like, any handling or extra fees like that. Um, I don't mark it up or anything like that. Now, if you notice, for the guys who've done a lot with Kratex Candy, um, this is Candy Below, and I'm going white over the top of it. And before with the 4030, which was when you had to add in, a, in the candies, was great, but the candy would still heavily bleed into the white. Um, now, with the 4050 being used, you get little to no candy bleed. You might get a little dye, about the same as like a urethane, but... Um, so I didn't need to use, with the new 4050, you don't really need to use that bleed check sealer anymore to be able to do white on top. I mean, you can if you need it, if you find it's a problem, but uh, the 4050 holds the dye into the resin so well that you don't really need it to avoid that. Because before, you know, the, the dye load, the aniline dye is so heavy, it just, you know, the white would hit and the white would turn whatever color. Let's go over here. So how many do we end up with so far? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'm lost. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven or twelve. I think we have twelve. What size panel? This is a 12 by 18 panel. So this is bigger than the last ones. So the last panels were 9 by 12, which was this. So this is two, this is double the size. So it's a big panel. This is two, because usually what I do, most of my feeds. Uh, Stephen asked what the bid is up to. The bid is up to 250. It's at 250 right now. Um, Run Liquitex acrylic through my airbrush. Yeah, Liquitex. Yeah, that's great, and so they're so th especially a lot of their their colors are so thin, um, you can run them easy. I'm just you know, 
not a massive fan of the AB Turbo as its use. Love the oops, wrong color. Um, but yeah, Liquitex is great. I, I like their stuff uh, more. You know, we were using it on wall murals and stuff back in the day. But I switched. I once I got in with Createx years ago with T-shirts, and everything else, and then with the automotive, they just have everything I need it for. Two seventy-five. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I forgot to mention that this is a much, much bigger panel um, than year than the last few. I figured with this freestyle skull, I was gonna be able to just cover more ground and more area faster. So, Gary, what would this make for you? Oh, Jean's at three hundred. Thank you, Jean. Bids go up when we start getting down to the down to all the little details. Like Gerald says. What does Gerald say? What's the word? Details. Oh, you hear the wind? Cool. I got some wind going. So if we did get cut off, the last highest bid gets it that we see. <laughs> But for those joining, yeah, you can watch us back. Um, and just see, just went from nothing to this in two hours. Just sketched. No stencils other than textures. Oh, I think I used my pocket graphics once or twice, so technically that was a little bit of stencil. Oh, that's sweet. Um, buy because her husband loves your work. It's gonna be his early Father's Day gift. Oh, cool! That's awesome. That is very, very cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. If there's something you want me to add to it on the back or or something, um, message me afterwards if you end up winning it, and we can we can uh, accommodate that as well. Um, Josh said he loves to keep fitting with the Canadian to U.S. conversion. Yeah, I know. And then there's all the, the duty and everything else. It's always fun. Kaylee, time check. It's 9.50. 10 more minutes. This is just about going to wrap it up. So it looks like this little puppy is going to go home to Gene. So Gene, when you get a chance after this, you can message me privately and give me the PayPal details and stuff. And like I said, if you want me to add anything to it, this one is going to go home to you. Steve, thank you for um, joining in and contributing and Really appreciate it. Thank you for everyone checking out on a Friday. The question, what color pinstripe should go around this outside? Should we do like a bright green? Or should we do... Gene, what color pinstripe you want around the outside since this is going home to you? 
for the early Father's Day gift. Or maybe I will just do, we'll just make it look like a picture frame and bevel the edges. It'll look cool. Yeah, we'll picture frame. Yeah, I was thinking green, but then, you know, Gerald's going to have a problem. Gene, you want bright green? Okay, we're going to do bright green. Okay. <laughs> At least he doesn't join. Hmm? And so he doesn't just randomly join in. Well, it's not going to him anyway, so. He's so big a man. He hates green. He hates green. He's scared of green. It's a big baby. <laughs> okay, so let's do this here. It's right time. You're very welcome. Fresh blade. Oh, another McKay. Mike, that's cousin Michael. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining in. I'm gonna be down in your neck of the woods. Well, not your neck of the woods, but I'll be in Orlando in two and a half weeks, three weeks. Then I might be heading over to Tampa. There's still from the air out that though, so I'll let you guys know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get a nice little like an eighth inch gap there. I'm gonna go right green. We can get the paint churning. Oh, my paint rack? Yeah, I was like, what? My paint tumbler. So this is a good trick for overspray, guys. Every time I do this, I think of um, Steve Driscoll. It's, you know, it was so obvious, and then he showed it to me. I was like, son of a bitch. It was uh, just flip up your edge like this, so your overspray will kick up. And it won't get on your piece. So you don't have to cover your whole piece. You're just basically making like a, a wind deflector. So every time I do this, I think of Mr. Driscoll. I know the art is gone years back, gone too soon. Cool. Gotta mix up some green. Um, I wish I had the opaque colors. The opaque colors have a sick, sick green right now. Um, so I'm going to take opaque yellow and opaque green. And we'll just make a cool one. Not going to take much. Okay, if you're making up this green, this opaque, the illustration green, takes like nothing. It's very, very little. To make a cool green. I'm gonna add a little 40-50. Just because we're on hard surface, you don't really need it. 
but it does make it flow a little more like urethane and it definitely dries to a harder consistency. So that's a cool green. All right, look at that. There we go. That's going to look great. Oh, hi, Uncle Roger. Hey, hi, Uncle Roger. How you doing? Yeah, I'll let you know when... Um, yes, you got Kaylee's name spelled right. No problem. It's We picked the most complicated way to spell it. I want to go to Orlando, but he says no. Well, I'm working in Orlando, so you can't come. But I can hang out. You're in school. It's not, if it was school vacation week, that'd be one thing. Am I really in school at this point? Yes, you are. Kind of. Technically, I'm allowed to do it if I just do it virtually, which I can do if I'm in the room while you're working. I'm not paying for you to come to Florida. Oh. And see, Ro Uncle Roger always shows up on a paint and skulls. That's why he thinks all my paint and skulls. He missed the he missed the crow painting. Last week's painting, which was. Uh, Oh, Kelly, go grab last week's pants over there. Oh. Yeah, the shining one. And then uh, we did the rose painting week before that. This was last week, so those who missed last week's feed, this was last week's feed. We did that and. I thought I was going to fail at this one. I figured it was going to go in the two feeds, but it's pretty happy I pulled it off in two hours. I mean, I pre-cut the stencils and templates, obviously. So it's probably more of a three and a half, four hour project. All right, let's see what this green goes to. Let's see how this looks. You know, like I said, Gene, just uh, message me on the side and we'll... If you want me to write something on the back or uh, anything like that, just let me know. And we'll make it really cool for him. Are you ready for this? Hello, Patty. Let's see what we got. We're going to pull the outside off first. It's like Christmas. It's always like Christmas. What's that? Oh. <laughs> With the 4050 out the paint mask or tape from... Yeah, it does. It makes it more... It dries harder, so it does help it. The biggest thing that most people get d lamps for a few reasons. A, you didn't prep it well enough. Or if you spray the paint too light at the beginning and it got chalky and dusty, you will get d lamps from that as well. But the 4050 will make it less susceptible because it does turn... It turns the acrylic into basically an acrylic urethane. So it definitely makes it more durable. Let's get it in there. Yeah, that green sure did it. That's pretty cool. Whoa, almost dropped the painting. Ooh. That would have stunk. Get that there. And then I'm gonna do one extra little touch. And then we're gonna call it a night. Mm. Just gonna bevel these edges a little bit here. <laughs> I, I think it was an autocorrector or something. But Steve said that painting is so COVID. Great fun. If <laughs> 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 that wasn't an autocorrect, that's great. So I just bevel the edges a little bit, so. That looks really cool. And then, good old signature. Twenty, twenty-one. Gary, you came in a little late. We're almost done. Hi, Gary. Yes. You're late. It's done. This is rare. Usually you're here the whole stream. It is a Friday, though. 
Yeah. So like I said, thank you everyone for tuning in on a Friday. Uh, I know this is not my normal time. Um, I hope you enjoyed this Friday feed. And this is going to a good home. Gene, congratulations on the win. And uh, we will see you all next Thursday. I'll plan something a little bit more intricate. Um, and then we're going to start planning stuff. We're going to start planning stuff for the rendezvous and the circus coming up. Like I said, i got some great projects planned for that. So hopefully you guys can make it down to that, uh, to either one of them. And uh, I will see you all next week. Again, congratulations, Gene. Thank you for everyone else who oh, bid. Oh, Maggie was getting LASIK and, I had to see, and he had to see a surgeon. Oh, yeah. That's a likely excuse. She could have waited. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Tell her I hope she's doing good. Uh, and uh, I will talk to you all next week. Have a Wait, great night. Someone asked what paint pen that was. What paint gun was what? Paint pen. Oh. Is it a Posca pen? Yes, Posca. So these are. Da, da, da. Zoom in here. These are Posca paint pens. So these the these are awesome. These they come in a bunch of different sizes. These are a, a point seven. They have brush tip. They have a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, and I think the new Alpha Enamels makes a water-based paint pen similar to this as well that'll do the same effect. Um, I do a lot with these because you can draw in detail and do a whole bunch with these. But Posca's been around forever, man. These were prior to like the past few years. You could only get these overseas like in Japan and places like that. They had no U.S. distribution. Um, and like artists I knew that used to do a lot of like skateboard and surfboard stuff, they'd fly over and they just grab like a suitcase for whatever they could buy and bring them back here because you couldn't import them. Um, but now they're imported here. But if you can't find the Posca ones, which is P-O-S-C-A, check out Alpha Enamel um, or Alpha 6. They have their own paint pens. And maybe Dave at Coast. If, I don't think Dave's still on, but you can check with them. There's some other ones they can do from there. So uh, with that being said, now I'm going to sign off. And thank you everyone for checking it out. I enjoyed it. It was a great time. Good Friday night. And cheers, everyone. <laughs>